Hello, this is Kyle. Um, I am making this video today because I recently got called out on the Wicked Edge Sharpening Forum. Um, basically, I'll just give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what happened, and that is a, uh, a new customer got on there, a new, a new user got on there and um, said that he was thinking about starting a knife sharpening service and wanted to know what people could were charging for, uh, for sharpening services so he can know how to price his service. And the first guy to reply, said he charges $40 a knife for the initial sharpening and $10 a knife for resharpening and he charges and he doesn't charge anything to friends and family. Um, and then I got on there behind him and said I charge $8 a knife or $7 a knife when uh, they give me five or more knives for my sharpening service. And, um, and then I also explained that I'm usually sharpening knives in four minutes or less. That's kind of my target time for sharpening. And uh, and once I was done saying that, the guy said, well, that's not possible. I don't know how you're going to sharpen knives in four minutes or less on a wicked edge to a thousand minute finish. So then I replied and I explained my process. And uh, he replied with an okay laughing face emoji. So he doesn't believe me. So I kind of have something to prove now, which is why I'm making this video today. Um, but I also, a couple other people jumped on and uh, were curious about how I sharpen knives in four minutes or less on a wicked edge to a thousand good finish. So... That's, that's what this video is today. Um, I'm on my way right now driving to a customer's house to pick up their knives um, and then I'll bring them home and I'll uh, set up my sharpener and I'll show you guys exactly my process. Um, my process for sharpening knives for in four minutes less is, is really simple. Um, basically all it is is I'm matching the edge geometry that's already on the knife. I'm do not doing any reprofiling and then I am uh, doing a thousand, I'm drawing a burr with a hundred grit stone and then progressing through uh, through a thousand grit finishing there with um, doing about 10, 15, 20 strokes per stone per side is normally what I do. And yeah, the results I get from that, my customers are always super happy with. Um, so uh, so yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to, my, just wait, this is my process for sharpening knives on a Wicked Edge sharpener in four minutes or less. All right, so here we are at my sharpening station here, um, and I'll just show you guys what I have in front of me. This is a Wicked Edge Generation 3 Pro Sharpener. It is about six years old. It's one of the early ones. Um, it is a tank. It is badly beat up. I have put probably 2,000, a little over 2,000 knives through it. Um, I probably should have replaced the vise on it about 500 knives ago because it's just it's making really ugly noises, but it just keeps working, and at this point, I kind of... Honestly, I'm just, I still have it because I just want to see how long it can get, get go before it wears out. So this is my Wicked Edge Generation 3 Pro Sharpener, older version of it. I have diamond stones and 100, 200, 400, 600, and 800 and 1,000 grit. Um, these stones are probably about probably about halfway through their life. I've probably sharpened between three and 400 knives um, with these specific stones. And then um, the knives I have that I'm going to sharpen today are... Let's see, I've got four Hinkle knives from um, some of my customers, Heidi and Greg. Uh, this is actually the first time that they've given me knives to sharpen before. Um, these knives, they're Hinkles. This is a Hinkle Chef's knife, a Santoku, a paring knife, and a uh, six-inch utility knife. So, um, and they are, they are dull. My, I think my butter knives are probably sharper than these things are, um, just to kind of prove it to you. I'm going to take this knife and I'm going to put it against my palm. Um, and I'm just going to put some pretty decent pressure on it and I'm going to run it down. So there we go. You can see the pressure on my palm and it just, I mean, it's not doing anything. All four of them are just, just dull. I mean, I can really make sense that they hired me. <laughs> um, so let's talk about, before I get started, I just want to talk about my sharpening procedure a little bit. Um, so I... I match the bevel angle on all the knives I sharpen for my customers. Um, I don't like to reprofile their knives for two reasons. One, it costs a lot of time, and two, it takes a lot of metal off knives. I'm a big fan of keeping metal on knives where it should be, so uh, matching the edge geometry allows me to remove a minimal amount of metal, um, and I can also, and it also takes me a lot less time because I'm not removing unnecessary metal from the blade. So. Um, so I match the edge geometry, and then I always take every one of my customer's knives to my sharpening service. I take all, all their knives to a thousand grit finish and a diamond stone, um, and I, I almost never go back beyond that. I have other stones. I have just about every stone in Wicked Edge's arsenal, 
Um, and I really, it's, it's a very rare case by case that I'll do anything more than a thousand grit. And here's why. A thousand grit finish is excellent for everyday cutting tasks. It is a little bit toothy, so it'll bite into whatever it's cutting. So um, if it's uh, rope or zip ties or boxes or tape or tomatoes or any hard skinned fruit or anything like that, you want the edge to be a little bit toothier so it actually bites into it. Polished edges, really refined edges, they look great. They're great for, pre for, for precision cutting tasks sometimes. They're great for shaving, they're great for push cutting, um, but but to be honest, the, the thousand grit finish or toothier finishes is really more effective on a utilitary uh, on, a, on a utility type everyday use. So I don't give my customers the option um, in terms of what edge angle to use or what finish to use on their knives. I do I match the bevel on everybody's knives, and I often I'll always finish them with a thousand grit stone. If I ask my customers, would you prefer a tw 15 or 20 degree sharpening angle, and would you prefer a 1500 or a 2200 grit? finish on your blade they'd probably look at me like i just asked them to calculate a trajectory to mars in the summer of next year based on the planetary alignment and they're just they're just not experts they just would have no idea how to answer that question um what they care about what i found at least my customers who are normally household customers getting just regular people getting their kitchen knives sharpened they just want their knife sharp to cut their vegetables with and they don't want you to destroy their knives that's pretty much it. Those are the parameters. So and I've been doing this for a lot of years, and uh, and all my customers have always been super stoked on on the results that that I give to them. So so yeah, I think I'm I'm doing something right. And I just keep continuing on this uh, on this path. So all right, that's that's enough banter. I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll get right into the process now. So um, let's see. I'll be right back. Uh, had to get this old iPhone here. This is what I'm going to be using for my stopwatch. This is my phone that I had last year. Um, and let's see. Get into it. All right. So I've got my stopwatch set at zero. And again, the goal here for this video is sharpening knives in four minutes or less. And the process I use to do that is I'm going to match the bevel geometry using the marker trick, draw burr, and sharpen up to 1,000 grit um, diamond stone from 100 through 1,000. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit start on this, and then I'm going to pick up the first knife and start sharpening. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the Santoku here, and then I'm going to mount it in my sharpener. I have a, a piece of sheepskin leather inside the sharpener's vise because it just helps the vise get a firmer grip on knives and prevents scratching. See what I mean about the vise? <laughs> Things is nasty, but it still works just fine. Um, color the bevel with a marker, and then I'm going to put on my thousand grit diamond stone, and I'm just going to make some passes and move my angle here with my other hand on the sharpener. What I love about the Gen 3 is you can just make these really easy angle adjustments. And I'm just making passes while making angle adjustments until I find an angle where that marker comes off. And on this Sentoku, it wants to come off right there at 27 degrees. And it is the same on the other side, which is actually surprising. Usually they're off one degree, two degrees, three degrees from one side to the other. Um, so now I put on my 100 grit diamond stone and I'm just going to sharpen one side of the blade using a scrubbing motion and I'm just going until all the marker comes off and once the marker is off I'll check for a burr. So I can feel a burr towards the front of the blade pretty good there not so much at the back so I'm going to do some more work all right so I'm done with that side now I'm going to draw a burst from the other side this is really the most, it's the most time consuming, but it's also the most consuming, or uh, most crucial part of the construction process. Without drawing a burr, there's no way to be sure that your stone is actually hitting the apex of the edge. And if the stone's not hitting the apex, your knife is not going to get sharp. So take your time on this step. Super worth it. 
I usually find it's easier to draw a burr from the second side than the first side. And yeah, there's a there's a well-pronounced burr along the entire length of the blade here. So now I can switch over the 200 grit tone, and I just start sharpening, alternating my strokes left and right. Pretty relaxed pace here. about 20 strokes per stone per side. I'm also listening and feeling when the stone stops like grinding so much and makes a softer noise, we can switch. My 800 grit stone. And finally my 1000 grit stone. Last thing that I do is I clean off the blade. Um, shoot, I didn't bring a paper towel. I'll be right back. Spray it down with rubbing alcohol, the paper towel. Clean off the blade. And remove it from the sharpener. Check it for sharpness. Go ahead and stop my stopwatch here. Four minutes and seven seconds, and I bet I would have got under four minutes if I didn't have to go get the paper towel. Um, that's okay, we'll go to the next one. So four minutes and seven seconds for the first one. I'm gonna reset this. Oh, and uh, and this knife is definitely very sharp. The test I like to do most on knives is just the fingernail test, the thumbnail test. If, my th if I run my thumbnail down and it catches, that's sharp enough for me. Let's see if I can do a paper test just to show you guys real quick. Yeah. There we go. So it went from a butter knife, couldn't cut my hand with a lot of pressure, and now, yeah, slicing through paper. The paper test is not the best test to do for knives. There's a lot of variables there. One, the type of paper. Two, the angle at which you hold the knife. And three, I don't like it because Paper is actually really terrible for knives. That's why I prefer the thumbnail test. It's also easier. Um, but yeah, so it, I mean, I'm super happy with how sharp this knife is, and I think my customer will be as well. So moving on to the next one, uh, I'm going to do the uh, chef's knife now. Again, go ahead and press start. We're at zeros. I'm going to hit start on this. Oops, wrong button. Stopwatch. Hit zero on this one. There we go. The chef's knife um, has more curvature than the Santoku, so I actually clamp all chef's knives about an inch, inch and a half away from the tip of the blade. Um, that's kind of my general rule, is if the knife has more curvature towards the front, clamp it closer to the front. Uh, I've found that on thousands of knives, that rule holds up um, with only one or two exceptions. And usually, kitchen knives are almost always the same. You always clamp them a little closer to the front. Pocket knives, those are the ones that can get a little weird, but... Um, okay, so let's see. Clamp down. I'm gonna find the sharpening angle. Just making a few passes here. Okay, this one is also. I'm going to do this knife at 25 degrees per second. I'm going to put the vinegar stone on and just start scrubbing again until all the marker is gone and then check for a bird. There's 
good burr along the whole thing. Give it a try. See there, the knife moved a little bit. So the edge of the stone caught on it and pulled it upwards, so I just reset it back to where it was originally. If this was a uh, $800 knife and the knife moved, I would probably restart, refine the angle, um, do all that good stuff, but uh, this is not the, that's not the case. So when a knife moves on me, especially just the knife that I'm just trying to get sharp without doing anything fancy, I uh, just reset to where it was before, just eyeball it. Draw a burr again. There's another burr, and now we're good to go. This knife is done, pull it out of the sharpener, hit the stopwatch, that is at 4 minutes and 1 second, and again, very sharp, very happy with this edge. Take the test again. Through it until I screwed it up. There we go. All right. So resetting the stopwatch again, setting to zero, and go. Mm, hang on. I pressed a button on here. Sorry, hang on, you guys. Okay, here we go. Hit start. Right. Knife clamped in, coloring with a marker. Use the thousand stone to find the angle. Looks like 23 and a half degrees. It's going to work for the other side too. 23 and a half. Any 
anybody who's new to Wicked Edge, new to Night Shark, and is watching this video, don't try to go as fast as I'm going right off the bat, right when you get your sharpeners. When you first start using a Wicked Edge sharpener, the most important thing to do is just go slowly and pay attention to your technique and make sure you're developing good muscle memory and forming good habits right from the start. Speed will come with practice. Just, you want to develop your technique in a good way and develop your muscle memory to start. So go as slow as you need to so it feels comfortable when you're, uh, when you're sharpening. Right. Cleaning off this blade. Go ahead and remove it from the sharpener. Hit stop on the stopwatch. Two minutes and 58 seconds. And again, we'll do another paper test here. Right through the paper. All right, and the last knife we have here is the paring knife. Resetting the stopwatch, hitting zero, and on the paring knife, just a little technique thing. And I'm just going to burn some time off the clock, but I'll show you guys. Clamp these higher up in the sharpener. Um, so that your stone is clear of the sharpener's vice. With the small knives, that's all I always really do is just I clamp them up high up in the sharpener and it works like a charm. If you don't clamp them up higher, um, the stones could interfere at lower angles. On any Wicked Edge sharpener, your target should be for the edge of the knife to rest 5 eighths of an inch above the top of the vice in order for the stones to clear. Oops. Marker comes off at 25 degrees. And that looks good for the other side as well. side so now I'm gonna widen it. and that's my general rule um, if you don't find a burr after 30 seconds of scrubbing on one side chances are you're using too low of a sharpening angle so you want to widen it to give your stones a better chance of hitting the apex of the edge so I just widened by one degree and I'm gonna try again Starting to feel one, it's got everywhere except right here on the blade, so work that spot just a little bit more. Right. it for this knife. Clean it off. And 
pull it out of the sharpener. Stop this. Three minutes and 50 seconds. All right, so that is four knives sharpened with an average time of under four minutes per knife. Um, one of the knives went really fast. Three of them went right at about four minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my process. Um, so these knives, I'll charge my customer um, $8 for each of these because they give me four knives. Um, so that's $32. And at four minutes a knife, 30 that's, uh, let's do the math on that. 16 minutes of sharpening for $32 is pretty decent money. So the last part, piece of the puzzle um, is uh, I offer a del free delivery service with my sharpening. I pick the knives up from my customers' houses and I deliver them. So um, yeah, just gotta go deliver these knives. She lives right down the street and, uh, and that'll be that. So thanks for watching. Um, again, that's sharpening knives on a Wicked Edge Generation 3 Pro sharpener to a thousand grit finish in four minutes. Thanks, bye. All right, so now I'm on, on my way to deliver these knives to my customer. Um, and while I'm driving, I just uh, wanted to touch on something real quick. And apologies, because I know that this video is long already. Um, but what I want to talk about is the pricing structures uh, of sharpening services. So the guy who called me out on the Wicked Edge forum, he said he's charging $40 um, for a knife for the initial sharpening and $10 for resharpening. Um, and if you're doing a super precision job on high-end cutlery, um, a three, four, five hundred dollar knife, um, or just somebody who really, really, really cares about their knives and wants a super precision level of sharpening. I can totally see how that makes sense. It takes a long time to mount the knife and the sharpener perfectly to make sure you're using the exact right sharpening angle. Maybe you want to reprofile it for the customer if they ask for that. And 10 degree reprofile could take a long time. Um, so yeah, I could definitely see that. And then, and then the resharpening, that makes sense. Um, because once you know, if you're going to do that precision of a job and you record all your settings and they send the knife back to you uh, again, um, you, it really, you don't have to do all that extra work because the edge is already set. You just touch it back up. Um, so that, that structure totally makes sense. Um, my sharpening service is very different than that. That's not the business that I'm in. The business that I'm in is focusing on um, just regular household customers who just have kitchen knives, just have regular knives, Hinkles, Shoons, Wustoffs, those are like the highest end that I see. I see a lot of Cuisinarts or um, uh, Chicago cutlery, things like that. And, and, and these are not high-end knives. If I tried to charge those customers $40 a knife, I would just get laughed out of town. So, um, so no, I just, I mean, my pricing originally last year, I was at, uh, at $5 a knife. Um, and then I, uh, kept getting, uh, my customers kept telling me to charge more. So I went up with my pricing this year. I'm at, uh, $8 a knife and then seven, if they give me five or more knives. And that seems to be working out really well. I mean, just since the start, I just changed my pricing a week and a half ago. Um, but, uh, but no one seems to be balking, which is good. It means I haven't hit the ceiling on the pricing yet, but I also, I mean, sharpening knives in four minutes or less for eight dollars a knife um on an hourly rate that's 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 super good i mean that gives me the opportunity to do to offer free delivery for my sharpening service that's my competitive advantage um and also stay com within the competitive rates of what everybody else is charging in town there's a few other sharpening services here one of them charges i think eighty dollars an inch um another one Ooh, there's a doggy in the road doggy go home go home um, anyway, so I, so I think that staying competitive with my pricing and also offering an extra service, which is the free pickup and delivery, my customers love that. And I'm operating a pretty darn successful sharpening service right now, but that's not to say that other sharpening service, there aren't other models. That's just the business model that I found works really well in this town for me, for the lifestyle that I have. Um, if you want to offer a different sharpening service where you're finding customers, the customers who are going to pay $40 a night for a really spread out so you probably have to do that type of a service online um, market your services in facebook groups or youtube instagram whatever it is just to find people but um but for what i'm doing here in town i just found the pricing structure works and i'm, I'm making enough money that i'm super happy with and then yeah the sharpening job that i'm doing for for eight dollars a knife is it's a good sharpening job everybody's super happy with it i mean i will put a thousand grit finish on a wicked edge sharpener with a four minute sharpening job against any sharpening job that the guy at the farmer's market using the vertical belt grinder or the guy at the supermarket who's using the paper wheel i'll put my sharpening job against theirs any day of the week because the wicked edge just provides this that awesome edge that you really can't get without i mean other there's other precision sharpeners out there but the Wicked Edge is definitely the fastest of those precision sharpeners to use, especially the, the Generation 3 Pro. So, yeah, that's, that's it. I guess I'll wrap up the video right there. Um, thanks again for, uh, for watching, and Happy New Year to you. Bye.